Day 1 Varian Vanderbilt stirred. The pain, she knew, told her two things. One, she'd been hurt, although how badly she didn't know yet. And two, she was still alive. What precisely had gone wrong with the ship she knew not? Some kind of subspace anomaly near the orbit of the planet had done something to the ship. All the computers crashed and power failed. She remembered even the gravity net had failed for a time, and they had to work in zero-g to restore basic functions. But even then their troubles were far from over. The skipper of Alluvion had tried desperately to land on the planet to effect repairs. The ride down had been extremely rough, and about halfway down through the atmosphere, the ship began to break up. The noise was deafening, and the chaos that ensued... It made her head hurt just thinking about it. A distress call was sent, and for the moment, Virian wasn't even sure if anyone had heard it. Absorbing the pain for a brief moment, she steeled herself before opening her eyes, thinking about her prospects if their call for help had gone unheard, by anyone, anywhere. Her eyes snapped open. She saw sky above her, a strangely earth-like sky, speckled with fluffy, cheerful white clouds, It looked serene. She felt around her with her hands and winced at more pain in her left shoulder. She noticed she was lying on what felt like gravel, sand, blades of stringy, grass-like foliage tangled in what looked like sheets of insulation, the material that filled gaps between bulkhead surfaces in ship construction, sound and temperature absorbing. The cloudiness in her head slowed her thinking, and she slowly sat up, blinked, and turned her head carefully, wishing her ears would stop ringing. Blood had run from several cuts and scrapes on the left side of her face and a few places on her arms and legs. The blood had almost dried already, and although tacky to the touch, none of them appeared serious. Both her shoes were still on, and her one-piece coverall in soot and blood-smeared company turquoise was still largely intact. She looked around. Green hills surrounded the plain on which she lay, surrounded by a massive debris field. Most of the stuff lying around her, dotting the unusually familiar green grassland, was unidentifiable. Small scraps of metal, probably hull plating, and foam-like insulation, cabling, torn pieces of plastic paneling, and conduits and pipes lay everywhere as far as her eyes could see. Behind her, a larger shape loomed, what she realized was part of the hull of the alluvion itself. She couldn't make out the bow or stern, but it looked like a section of the ship somewhere between the two, in the middle, perhaps. It looked torn open and exposed at either end, and flatter, like the crash had squashed and collapsed it onto itself. A column of black smoke rose thickly into the air, and aside from the sound of burning and crackling, it was silent. She struggled to her feet, noticing for the first time that this feat indicated she hadn't broken any bones. The scientific side of her analytical mind noted this peculiarity and calculated the odds of that actually being the case. She'd survived a fall from orbit she realized, stunned. From orbit. Inside a section of the broken-up ship with just a few scrapes and scratches, she cried out in pain as she flexed her left shoulder, and possibly a sprain or even a torn ligament. Hello? Varian called out, hoping to attract the attention of the other survivors. There had to be other survivors, weren't there? Had to be. Receiving no reply, she walked forward a few paces closer to the looming small mountain of ruined hull section. Hello? She called again, looking round. Still receiving no answer, she walked up to the wreckage, carefully stepping around the sharp, jagged debris at her feet. Aside from the low, undulating rumbles of the flames licking at the air from numerous gaping holes in the wreckage and the sharp pinging of expanding and contracting metals, all was deathly silent.